Hey guys, this is Haley from OneOnRabbits.com, and in today's video, I thought I'd take you through my clicker training routine. Obviously, each clicker training session is going to be very different depending on what tricks or skills I'm working on, but I thought it'd be fun to take you through kind of what I do and then almost critique myself so that you guys are able to see what I did wrong and what I'd want to improve on. I find that this is super helpful for me when other clicker trainers do this. I learn a lot from it, so let's go ahead and get started. So to begin with, I was using the target stick and was having them do circles or spin, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes both the bunnies did it at once, which I thought was super cute. Sometimes it can be confusing when you're clicker training two bunnies because they don't understand when you're asking one rabbit to do it versus both rabbits. So. It can be a little bit hard and frustrating for them, which is why I actually ended up separating the bunnies in a little bit from now, as it was just getting frustrating for Ebony especially. She wasn't able to focus because she was so focused on Sterling stealing all the treats. So you definitely can do clicker training with both bunnies. Uh, it just can get a little bit confusing. I know there's clickers that they sell that have two different noises. So you can teach one rabbit to respond to one noise and the other one to respond to another. Um, um, I haven't really looked into that at all, but maybe in the future I would. So now I'm just using my finger as a target stick and practicing spin. As you can see here, I was trying to get Sterling to spin on command, so just by using a finger motion instead of like leading him into a circle. And he wasn't quite ready for that and he was kind of confused on what I was asking him to do. So then I just went through and had him do a circle following my finger. Then I got the target stick out again and I had them do standing on their hind legs. Uh, I was trying to get them to do it facing each other so it kind of looks like they are kissing because I think it's so cute when they do that. Uh, but as you can see, they, they don't really understand where to stand. So I was trying to lead them with the target stick so that they would line up. And I got them to do it a couple of times but uh, they definitely don't really understand that they're supposed to be facing each other. There we go. <laughs> I just think it's so cute when they do that. So it is fun to clicker train with two bunnies because you can do fun little things like that, uh, but there's also disadvantages uh, as well. So, And as you can see here, they were actually getting a little bit food aggressive. So that's when I went ahead and separated them. I started with Sterling first and I decided just to go through a whole clicker training thing with Sterling by himself. So here I put the target stick away and I was using my finger. I was gonna try to see how far Sterling could go and how much he knew. So right here I'm just having him follow my finger and then I'm trying to use a finger motion, which is a like upwards movement of my index finger. He's doing pretty well. He kind of understands the flicking motion of my finger means to stand. However, he gets very close to my body and it's really hard to clicker train when he's that close. So I use my finger as a target stick for him to back up and then I click and treat and then I have him um, continue standing when he's further away from me. Otherwise what happens is he sometimes tries to like use my body to stand on and that's not quite what I'm going for. And he kind of gets it, but as soon as my finger goes away, he sits down. So I'm still trying to figure out how to let him stand and how to let him know like when to come down. Um, because otherwise I have to hold my finger up above his head for him to continue to stand. 
So right here you can see it. I try to take my finger away after I do the flicking motion and he just immediately sits right back down after my finger goes away. So I'm still working on that and trying to figure out how to get him to continue standing. Uh, he's definitely really confused at this point, so. So next I am trying something new with Sterling. I have never taught him to weave my legs, but Ebony is very familiar with this. So I'm starting with the target stick and leading him in a figure eight motion around my legs. So I started just having him follow the target around one leg and then clicking and treating. Right here he was kind of confused and stood on his hind legs. Um, so clicked and treat. And then have him go around the other leg. <laughs> he kind of gets lost here again. Click and treat. When you're introducing a new trick or whatever it can be kind of confusing for your bunny at first so as you can see here i tried to go all the way around two legs before clicking and treating and then i went back to a simple spin so that he wouldn't get too frustrated um, trying a new trick and he could do something easy that he already knew right here i noticed that i'm actually um doing something wrong. I'm having him start circling my left leg instead of my right leg. And so then when I go back to trying my right leg first, he gets really confused on what to do because <laughs> as you can see, he's like, what do you want me to do? So um, make sure if you're teaching this to always start with them circling the right leg first or the left leg, whatever you prefer. Um, and then switching it up once they are more familiar with it. Um, but as you can see, I trained it wrong and he gets super confused here when I try to go back to circling the right leg and then the left leg. Then I go ahead and sit on the floor and I am trying to teach Sterling to sit on my lap. Uh, this is kind of difficult for him because he's such a large rabbit and I have such a small lap that he kind of like doesn't fit very well. Uh, he also doesn't understand what I'm trying to ask him at this point as this is the first time I've ever tried teaching him this. Uh, looking back, I probably shouldn't have tried to teach two new tricks in one training session, but um, he seems to be doing pretty well. He was just kind of confused on what I was asking him. He kept following the target, but then um, it was hard for him to understand that I wanted all four legs on my lap instead of just the front two legs. So this is going to take some practice, but um, I know he'll figure it out eventually. And then I brought the tunnel out. Again, probably shouldn't have done this. He has done the tunnel once before, but it's still fairly new to him. And I think I kind of was doing too many tricks that were new and he just started to get a little bit confused on what I was asking him. So looking back, I definitely think I probably should just do one newer trick a session. Uh, but he did kind of go through the tunnel a couple of times. Uh, I had to make it very obvious for what I wanted him to do. I stuck the whole target stick inside the tunnel for him to follow. Um, but I didn't stay too long on this trick because it was getting towards the end of his focus. Um, rabbits only have like a five to ten minute span of being able to focus and he had already been clicker training for about eight to ten minutes here so he was kind of on the verge of being done but as you can see he does go through the tunnel a couple of times um, but eventually he just decides that he is done and he runs away, <laughs> which is totally fine. Yeah. I let him go back to where he wants to go and I bring out Ebony. As you can see after Sterling's clicker training session, he just like passes out on the cement because he's like so tired. Um, I just think it's so cute that he, um, got a nice little workout there. <laughs> Here is Ebony and she's very excited to start clicker training. And I accidentally tripped on her because she was running under my feet. 
but uh, as you can see, she actually starts circling my legs immediately. She knows this trick very well. As you can see, I didn't even need to prompt her. She just saw that my legs were in the position of doing figure eights, so she was ready to go. And she only needed a little bit of prompting, um, just one little finger, and she weaved both legs. So here I am training Ebony to stand up with a finger motion, kind of like what I was doing with Sterling. I was just going up and then clicking and treating. Um, she did it fairly well. Um, there's a spin. <laughs> and another spin. I was trying to just use a spin hand motion and not lead her the entire time. Um, here's some more standing. Click and treat. Um, a, a good thing that sometimes I think I forget to say is you want to use the clicker immediately when they do the behavior you want them to do, especially in the beginning. So in the beginning when you're teaching a stand, you would want to immediately click and treat right after they stand up because you're rewarding the behavior that you want. The longer and the more familiar they are with the trick, the longer you can wait before you click and treat. Um, but especially in the beginning, you need to click as soon as possible. If you have a delay in the click, sometimes they just don't understand what you were trying to train them. So here I'm trying to do uh, weaving the legs again, and um, I'm not sure why she was so confused. I think she was like, wait, what trick are we doing? So, um, but she catches on pretty quick. And there she goes. <laughs> It's kind of funny like how slow she hops around my legs and sometimes she hops faster but Ooh, gets a little bit confused here try to make it a little bit more obvious <laughs> I think she was distracted at this point I think she had heard a noise or saw something and she had frozen a little bit to see what was going on and there she is pooping <laughs> Um, so here I'm trying to teach Ebony to stand on my lap. She used to know this trick. Um, she isn't as familiar right now because I haven't taught it in a while. Um, so I'm just trying to reintroduce it to her. Obviously it's easier for her than Sterling because she's a lot smaller uh, and she's able to stand on me easier. Uh, I think what might be easier is if I put like a flat surface on my lap, like a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood, uh, that might be easier to teach at first. So then I bring out the tunnel for Ebony, she's much more familiar with this. As you can see I can just tap the front of the tunnel and then I tap the back of the tunnel and she knows how to go through. Um, she actually used to know this trick a lot better, she used to do a lot of agility, so um, she's a little bit rusty compared to how she used to be, but she actually does this trick very well. So she's kind of getting distracted at this point. Um, it's towards the end of her attention span. Um, I'm gently asking her if she wants to continue and she doesn't, so she hops away and I end this session. So that's basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't know if you found it useful, but if you did, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let me know down below if this is a type of video that you guys enjoy seeing. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very soon on a new one. Bye.